Hello everyone, my name's Frank, I'm glad you're here. In this video, I want to address a common challenge that we have when we're teaching using a tool such as Microsoft Teams, and that is group work. How do I get the students to work together in groups so that they can learn and teach each other and I can assist them when they get stuck? Well, there's a couple of ways that I can do that in Microsoft Teams. The one way is during a Teams meeting. If I have an event where I want the students to go into a breakout room, collaborate on something, come back to the main room, I can do that using the new breakout room feature of Microsoft Teams. The problem though, is that once I end that meeting, those breakout rooms are gone forever. What if I want to facilitate group work over the course of a semester? or a longer period of time, maybe a month, maybe a semester. Well, in that case, I could have the students go out and create their own team, invite me in, make me a team owner so I can help them. Well, that's a bit kludgy, and what ends up happening there is I'm a member of way too many teams. But if I create a channel in Microsoft Teams, then all the other students can see the work that I just want a subset of students to work on. There's an answer to this. It's called private channels. So in this video, I'm going to look at where breakout rooms in a team meeting is useful and where private channels can help address the needs of having one team that I'm an instructor for, but also limiting what students can see, which groups they're part of. Let's go have a look at that. Here I am and I've got my meeting started. And what I'm going to do here is you'll see that I have participants. I have both uh, Diana Prince and Clark Kent and myself. So these are the three participants in the meeting. And to see my participants, I can just close or open the participants window. So what I'm going to do as an organizer is because I have uh, more than two participants, I have this breakout rooms icon. So I'm going to go in here and I can create breakout rooms. Not too exciting because I don't have very many people here, but I can assign both of these people to a single breakout room. I could choose how many breakout rooms. And I have another video on the channel that goes into breakout rooms in a little bit more depth, but I've got my breakout room here. And right now the breakout room is closed. What I can do is I can start the rooms. Once I start the breakout rooms, everybody goes off and they can start collaborating. Now breakout rooms are great because I can use these during this meeting and I can have people go into the breakout room and you'll see that happen in just a second here. And then when I'm ready, I can call them all back. Now during the lifespan of this meeting, these breakout rooms are permanent. So the idea is that I go in here, if I add rooms or whatever I'm doing here, you can see I can go into the breakout room, I can rename it, I can join the room as an instructor so I can go and have a look. And then if I want to, I can say, okay, everybody, it's time to come back. So what I can do is close the room. So the room gets closed and everybody comes back to the main room. But you'll notice that even though I'm closing the room and everybody comes back to the main room, I can still have that breakout room while this meeting is progressing. You can see that the breakout room is closed. And if I want to put everybody back in there, I can just start them up again. So you can see I can start and stop breakout rooms. But if I go in, and I decide to end this meeting for everybody. So I'm going to end the meeting for everyone. That breakout room is also gone. So I can no longer join that meeting. And if I start a new meeting, we'll start up a new meeting. We'll start with a camera here. I'll join the meeting here. I actually turn the audio off, but we'll start the new meeting. The new meeting is started. We'll have both of those participants come back to the meeting so that we can see that they're rejoining the meeting. And when they rejoin the meeting, you'll notice that now that we have this new meeting, my breakout rooms, if I go back to breakout rooms, notice I have to create them again. So that's not gonna be good if I have a long-term group work. So if I have people that are in a specific meeting and during that meeting, I want them to break out, go to the breakout room, come back, go to the breakout room, come back. That's persistent during the meeting, but only the meeting. So what can I do if I have, for example, students that need to work together over the course of an entire semester? Well, there's a trick to that. And what I can do is I can go into my outdoor adventure club, go into the ellipse here, and I can add a channel, but I don't want to add a channel using this icon or this menu item. I want to go to manage the team. And when I manage the team, I want to go to channels here. And underneath channels here, you'll notice that all of the previously created channels I have are currently showing for me. And they could, if I want, I can force them to show for members. 
So it's going to ask me to go in and show them for members so that when they go in and show them. But you'll notice the type here, they're all public groups. That means that all students can join these channels and can work in those channels. I can set permissions in terms of whether they're allowed to post or not. But at this point, everybody who's part of this team can both see as well as participate in those channels. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to add a channel. And I'm going to add this channel. I'm going to call this uh, group number one, the classic group name for, oh, don't have the, the number sign either. So we'll call it group one, the classic name for groups in my organization. And then what I'm going to do here is instead of having a standard channel, what I'm going to do is make this a private channel. So it's going to be accessible only to a specific group or people within a team. And I'm going to go into there. And then when it creates this channel, I can now add those members in there. So let's go ahead and add Diana. So I've added Diana Prince in there. And let's go ahead and add, say, Bruce Wayne. I've added Bruce Wayne in there. And then just for fun, let's add uh, Arthur Curry. So now I've added in Arthur Curry as well. So now this group here is going to be accessible by me because I'm a teacher. So I have access to all the groups, but only these members are going to be able to access the group. So I'll say done to that. So now let's bring over a couple of screens here. So I just have a remote session for both of these users. So this here is the screen for uh, Diana. She's accessing teams and notice group one appears for her. So she's been made a member of group one. So she can go into group one. She can start a new conversation. And uh, maybe it's something like, you know, let's do better than group two. We're going to have some all sorts of secret plans where we're going to do better than group two in terms of the work that we're doing for this semester. And then if I bring over another user, so this is just, again, another remote session for, um, in this case here we have Clark Kent. So Clark Kent is here. Notice Clark does not see group number one because Clark is not a member of group number one. So if I look here at group one, I can see group number one and only the members can see it. And if I go here, you can see that's got this little lock here that indicates it's a private group. And if I go in here to manage the channel, you can see that underneath this channel here, these are the members of this group one. Now that does mean that I do have to plan in advance for the semester and that I have to put people into those groups on a semi-permanent basis. So what I could do is if I'm running maybe two projects during the semester, then I might create a first set of groups and then I might mix up the teams and do another set of groups. But the nice thing here is they can hold private meetings within this channel they can go in and they can do all sorts of posts and they can put files and the only people accessing this breakout room, if you would, the semester long breakout room would be these individuals. So both are very useful. Breakout rooms during a meeting, going in and out of those breakout rooms is great for that meeting. And for a semester type of project or something where I want people to be able to hold their own meetings, I want them to be able to leave and come back, then I might want to create what we call private channels. Uh, requires a little bit of administrative work. It doesn't automatically assign students to it, but it can be quite useful. I hope this video was useful and that you'll use private channels as a way of going in and creating really good private groups within a larger team. It allows you as an instructor to really see what's going on with your students. It allows them to collaborate privately in smaller groups and still receive your assistance. And it still gives them one central portal to go to for their entire class or program. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe, all those good things. And here's some other videos on the channel that you may be interested in.